Mabel Story the Novel, Season 1, Sacred Tears, Chapter 4, Part 1, Darkness. You said it so well before, my love. Dane is dead. All that remains is Maga Slow. Now, let her know her destiny. Slow hissed, easing his grip on Ariel's hair and following her as she walked to Rin. The girl stood horrified at the balcony, her gaze riveted on the fight below. Pulling her eyes from the battle, Ariel brushed a few locks of silvery hair back. Mother, why are the knights fighting? She had never seen the terror of war, and certainly not when that war included the knights of the temple. She was not new to the sight of death as she remembered watching helplessly when Will was killed. But she never imagined how war could make death so much worse. They fight for you, my child. Ariel answered mournfully, trying to hold back her tears and keep a pleasant face. Why? Because you are important. This man will keep you safe. Ariel answered, looking back to Slow. You want me to go with the man that killed Will? Urin asked, recognizing his features as Dane, her father, despite the deep shadows cast by his cloak. How can you trust him? He's the one that killed Will! He's the one who blew up his own order! Ariel sighed a ragged breath, spying a sand glass on the table behind Rin. With understanding tears in her eyes, Ariel wrapped her arms around her and held her for a long while. Slow stared down at them over his nose, holding out his hand, waiting for Rin to take it. He was so close, so very close to his goal. You are bound for great things. Far greater than I could even imagine. So may not be the one I expected, but he is the one the world needs. And for that, he needs you. Ariel whispered. Mother, I, I don't understand. I know, my child. I know. I'm going to miss you. Ariel cried, hugging Green tightly. Slow felt a rise in power surge through the air. Following its path, he watched the sand glass rise from the table and shoot over to Ariel's outstretched hand. Ariel, no! He reached out to stop her. Ariel teleported away in a flash of light. Slow stumbled a bit as he caught his footing after they had gone. You choose to run when you should stay. Your violation of our contract will not go unpunished. Slow hissed, closing his eyes to feel where they had gone while whispers hung thick in the air around him. Introduce 1% Blood Solution, instructed Dr. Long, watching the monitor before him with excited anticipation. Blood Solution flow initiated. Bonding polymer temperature holding within acceptable parameters. Adelia called. Increase power output to 32% and begin backing off pulse support. Power output increasing. Pulse support at 73% and falling. Dr. Long, generator 5 is getting a little warm. The nerve connections are getting weak. Power output at 29.6% and falling. Dr. Long nodded, reaching into his shirt pocket and pulling out a key. I expected this. Initiating dark alchemic circle. Placing his hand on a large blank stone and twisting the key, Long sat watching the great circle's bright, pale glow turn darker as a set of circles, lines, symbols, and letters began to glow with purple light. Power output rising to 33%. Pulse support at 61% and falling. Stabilize pulse support at 50%. Do not let the heart's power output exceed 49% and hold for 14 seconds, Dr. Long commanded, sitting down at a monitor and watching the data stream in for the biomechanical heart that he, Made, and Carl had created. Pulse support stabilized at 50.32%. Power output stabilizing at 48% and holding. Good, good. Just do what you can to hold it steady. Increase blood solution to 100% over 14 seconds on my mark. Keyboards tapped quickly, making the adjustments, as Dr. Long watched in anticipation for the very number he was looking for. 49%. Power output has increased to 48.74% and steadily rising. Stand by. Power output at 49%. Mark! The scientist next to him tapped the control board. Instantly, a bright red liquid began flowing through clear tubes to the mass of mechanical muscle, slowly turning it a deep crimson. Sir, Generator 5 is getting close to overheating. Decrease its power output by 10% and compensate. We're 
almost there! Seconds passed in eternity. The cool gunmetal of the heart slowly turned crimson as the blood engorged it. On the monitor, progress bars filled as the biological and mechanical components bonded, working in synchronous harmony. Increasing oxygenation of synthetic blood to normal levels. No sign of rejection or necrosis, Adelia said, looking between a screen and the window, watching as the last of the bonding polymers melded. Cut all power from the generators. Cease pulse support. Begin circulation of synthetic blood. Ramp up the pressure to simulate 120 over 80 and hold. Behind them, the whine of the generators descended as more tubes filled with dark red liquid flowing through the heart. The great circle and dark circle stopped glowing as the residual energy diffused as mist. A minute passed as the heart pulsed on its own, pumping the synthetic blood through it as a real one. Then two minutes. Five. Ten. Gentlemen, we've done it. The biomechanical heart is complete. Madei announced. Cheers and congratulations erupted through the room. Some of them even ran into the streets to exclaim their victory. Thank you, Master Arcarium. Without your knowledge, we would have never been able to complete this, Dr. Long exclaimed. The white-haired gentleman extended his hand and gripped Dr. Long's firmly. You are very welcome, Doctor. I have been researching dark alchemy for many years now, and while my research has made great strides, this is by far the greatest. His horse-sized cobra familiar adjusted itself after resting coiled up at his feet, rearing up and spreading its hood wide while flicking its tongue in and out. Dr. Long backed away from the creature, unsure as to what was happening. Oh, you needn't worry about my familiar. He's under my control. Oh, but alas, as sweet as your victory is, I must return to Kratos where my research will bring about a new age. You do have the notes I left you for my dark transmutation circle, correct? Arcarium asked. Yes, and again, thank you so very much for your help, Master Arcarium, Dr. Long emphasized. Arcarium's smile left Long feeling unnerved as he turned and walked away. No sooner had Arcarium left the building than Dane and Minodora entered, returning from their year-long journey around the world. Instantly, both of them noted the lighter mood around the Great Circle. What's going on here, Maxis? There's a lighter atmosphere here than it has been in a long while. Dane asked when he arrived. Dane, it's good to see you again. Come and see. We've just completed the first organ. Maxis excitedly exclaimed, escorting both of them to the observation window. Dane silently looked on as Minadora pressed her face to the window, watching the pulsing heart in the center. You got it working? It's amazing! How did you do it after all this time? Minadora squeaked. Dane remained silent, noticing unnatural burn marks on the ground near the heart. Madei's student led us to a gentleman by the name of Arcarium, a master of something called anti-magic or dark alchemy. It allowed us to slow time in a concentrated area, allowing for the components to bind properly, Maxis said excitedly. Dane looked on silently as Minadora fell quiet, looking back to Dane worriedly. What's the matter, Dane? Maxis asked. Dane called him over to a quiet corner of the room, away from the happy celebration. I hope that you appreciate the enormous risk you've taken in using this dark alchemy. It is a dangerous and potent art that breaks down energy and magic completely. You mean it destroys energy? That's impossible. Energy can't be destroyed. What about the theory of conservation of- Dark alchemy doesn't work within the normal boundaries of science, as I am sure you are aware. Doing so, while helpful, can be dangerous if used without extreme care. Dane interrupted. Alchemy by its very nature is semi-magical, albeit heavily skewed as a scientific tool. Like anything else in this world, there are fundamental laws that are followed for the world to work properly. Dark alchemy does not follow these laws. In fact, it outright removes them from existence and relies on the inverse. Do you think that we shouldn't use it then? Maxis pressed. While it's used help to advance research, there was still a nagging feeling in the back of his mind that what they were doing was far too dangerous. Used in small amounts, dark alchemy can be a powerful tool, but in the amount and intensity that you are using, it is bordering on the perilous. It could rupture the barrier created by the Great Circle with ease, causing the energy of both circles to mix, the result of which could potentially distort all of Morgata. Max's eyes widened as he began to understand the magnitude of the danger they had created for themselves in just performing this one experiment. Are there any precautions that we can take to prevent such a thing from happening? Maxis pressed. 
Dane held his chin for a moment as he thought. Fortify the Great Circle with the Septagonic Circle between the circles. A balancer, if you will. It will provide a barrier between the two in case of failure, and ensure that one does not become more powerful than the other. Dane instructed, drawing out the particular pattern for them to use. After Dane's warning and help, the scientists forged ahead, creating other organs and body parts over the next two and a half years. Dane and Minadora watched on with interest to make sure that nothing would go wrong with the circles as they were used. Their studies abroad not only revealed how the darkness worked, but also allowed them to study magics and arts far beyond what they had learned in the past. Going to Aswan to ask Vusron's blessing for the usage of the Great Obelisk was a success. They met many couples, specifically newlyweds, and asked for their assistance, to which many agreed. A date was chosen, and they would gather in Aswan for the first attempt, and if it was helpful, a future date would be chosen to once again spread this powerful light. Now home, the couple would periodically leave to help the already strained traveling bishops of the world by healing the sick with healing spells or medicines. Occasionally, they would also battle off strange misshapen creatures made of nothing but shadows, similar to what the Queen of Orentia had described, all the while the world's darkness becoming steadily worse. Have you found anything that would tell you what the darkness is? Adelia asked once Dane and Minadora had come home from one of their journeys. Not entirely. Our research only proves that it is much more complicated than we first thought. Minadora answered, sipping on a cup of tea. And how complicated is it? Maxis pressed, setting down his cup and leaning over the table where they sat. Dane breathed slow and purposefully, locking eyes with his parents as he leaned forward. Maxis, I am only going to share this with you and Adelia, because you are my parents. I do not wish for you to pursue this. Am I clear? Dane asked, looking to both of them for confirmation that he did indeed understand. Darkness itself is somehow connected to one's emotional state. A collection of pain, sorrow, disappointment, and hate all gathered together in such a concentrated state that it becomes tangible and palpable. It is as if they were manifestations of the wounds left in a person's soul. Dane explained as Minadora continued. The lights we discovered helps with those wounds left behind in one's spirit. It's slow, but we're moving forward with our research to get rid of it. Maxis and Adelia remained silent for a long while, thinking over what they had been told when Maxis turned with a ponderous look. Tell me something, Dane. You said that this research would take you to some very dark places. So far, it seems you haven't even touched on them. Dane sighed heavily, lacing his fingers together and resting his chin upon them. The dark places I spoke of do exist, Maxis. The Queen of Orantia is an unfortunate victim of one of these atrocities. But rather than searching for those specifically, you have decided to share and spread the ultimate light. Dane reached over to Minadora and gripped her hand. We found that one's light could be directed inward or outward. Inward facing light, while helpful in keeping one's spirit up, also tends to pull the darkness surrounding it very quickly. Our light is what needs to be present to drive back one's darkness and expose the wounds for healing and care. 